Hi everyone, Ian here. So yesterday we got some really exciting announcements from OpenAI in terms of updates that they've made to their API. Uh, they've now made their API more steerable. Uh, they've given it function calling capabilities. They've given it the ability to uh, receive longer context and it's got lower prices. So I want to show some things here that I've discovered about the API, including how you can do quite complex um, structured data. The thing I'm most interested in here, interested in here is the uh, function calling that we, ability that we've got, because this makes it really easy for us to now call APIs rather than having to do a lot of um, manual parsing of data that's coming back from ChatGPT. So we've got these two new models. GPT-4-06-13, that's actually referring to the date, and GPT-3.5 Turbo-06-13. And uh, each of those allow us to do this function calling. So what we've got here is the ability to be able to take structured data from the natural language that we're giving it in terms of messages. So the examples it gives is email Anya so if she wants to go to coffee next Friday and it's able to say turn that into a string where Anya is one of the parameters and uh, whether she wants to go to coffee on Friday probably would be the other and so the example that I'm actually going to jump into that they've given so if we, if we click over onto this link here in documentation this code example here which is of using chat completion to call a weather API the way it explains this is that you Call cool model with the functions that you want to use and the user's input. That will give you the parameters that you need from it. So the example is here, the weather API. And you can see here, we give it a function that is get current weather. And we're asking it what weather like is in Boston. And then you use that to call the, the data that it extracts from this to call your API. And then you send that model back to, send that response back to the model to summarize. So actually you're making two open AI API calls here, and you're making uh, one to your third party API as well. So let's jump into VS Code to see that example working. I've actually just um, taken the top part of this so we can just see what the first API call to open AI returns. So if I just run that, so what we're doing, as we saw in that um, example there, We've defined the structure of a function and the properties that it takes. So two parameters going into this. We've got a location, which is of type string, and we've got a unit, which is of type string, and can be one of the two variables declared in this enum. Um, if I call this and we see what ChatGPT returns, so we can see here that given the content, what's the weather like in Boston, that we get the arguments from that. The location is Boston MA. And um, we can see that it's not defining a unit because we've not actually put that in the content of the, the user's giving. So if it's to write in this in Celsius, if I can spell it right. And then I called that again. Because we're defining Celsius, you can see that that's actually being passed down to that function as well. So that's all well and good, that's great. We can follow on with this and take the entirety of this conversation. So given that response, that we're passing back into our function, which is actually defined here, get current weather. And this is actually just hard coded for an example, but I'll give you a proper example in a second. And this then pass it up to ChatGPT again, the chat completion API rather, um, and says, what's the weather like, like in Boston? And then it gives you the response. You pass in the response here. So if we do that, so we print out the entirety of the output there. So this is returning that it's sunny and windy, its temperature is 72, and it's the location that we've given it and the unit that we've given it. Um, so the weather in Boston is sunny and windy with a temperature of 72 degrees. Great, that's what we want. So this is printing out the entirety of the response that we've got. Um, we can see that the weather in Boston is sunny and windy with a temperature of 72 degrees. And we've you and we can see the usage there as well. So prompt tokens seventy, completion tokens eighteen, and total of eighty-eight tokens. So this 
is a fairly simple structure that we're returning, uh, that we're defining for our function, which is just got these two parameters. I'm going to look at how that diff, how we can do some more complex structures now. So this is an example of a script that I've written previously, which is sourcing track lists from uh, ChatGPT, from the API, uh, the Chat Completion API. Probably not the best source of uh, music for you to listen to, but I thought it would be an interesting one to make use of. And you can see on here that I'm having to really guide it in terms of the prompt. I'm having to say, um, you, let's get rid of this a sec. I'll provide you with a prompt and you will respond with track names. Each track should be formatted like this. And I'm giving it some details with no other text. Each recommendation should be on the next line, previous line. Um, do not acknowledge, respond only with track names and artists in an order list. Don't respond with any other text. Um, and then in another message I'm saying, give me a recommendation in a particular genre and don't include tracks of over a certain length. And that's quite a lot of guidance that I'm having to do. When I run that, what I get is a list like this. So actually I need to put in the year and a label, music label that I want to search. So you can see you've got this data pack, got um, a full list of tracks. But now with those tracks that I'm having, I would have to ordinarily go off and split it, break it apart and split it up and using these uh, kind of delimiters that I've asked it to put in in the first place. So that's how I would do things uh, prior to the uh, announcements yesterday. If you take a look at how I've changed things now with structured data, so I'm able to call this using a really quite complicated structure. So I've defined in this that I want to return an object which is a track list, which has got is an array of items. And in each one of those items, it is, consists of an artist and a title, which are both strings. Um, and if I run this, so you can see we've got a track list. Each one of those tracks is not formatted particularly nicely, is it? Let me see if I can do something about that. So there we go, that looks a little bit better now. So we've got this track list and it's actually broken these up into individual tracks with an artist and the title. Um, and I'm, that means that obviously I don't need to do that on my end. I don't need to pass those things. I can actually just go straight away and call an API, say I want to create a Spotify playlist or something from them. I can just go off and call them with the individual tracks and chat GPTs provide it to me. Um, if I wanted to say, add an additional field, I can literally just add it to this. So we've got a co-pilot helping us out there. So yeah, I can literally add an additional field and it immediately specifies that as part of the function that um, is defined in the chat completion. And then it just adds it, it passes it, it gets all that data out. Um, and you can see with these, that as I'm doing these, obviously the amount of completion tokens um, drastically kind of increases based on uh, so you can see on previously completion tokens about 500 there for the other data here we're talking about 600 so depending on how much data i'm asking for obviously um, it increases how much we're spending so yeah if we compare that to say the original dj file that i had now these obviously aren't going to be a, a direct comparison because the tracks are different when, we, when I was doing it with that, the amount of data that was coming back as part of the chat completion is actually far less. So there's kind of this trade-off in that you've, you either pay for it yourself, as in you're going to have to pass this data in this structure um, without using a function calling, or you pay for it by paying more in the API calls that you're making because obviously you're paying more for completion tokens. We've got three times the amount of completion tokens being used there or more than. 
And so it's going to end up being more costly in terms of API calls. But um, yeah, I thought this was really interesting that we can actually get this structured data back so easily. Um, it really does open up a kind of new interesting opportunities in terms of APIs and make things a lot easier for developers. Um, one other thing to note is in terms of the price reductions. So if we look at the price reductions that they're talking about, we can see that they've reduced the cost of their input tokens by 25%. So if we refer back to what I was just saying in terms of um, how much you're spending, the the amount that I'm asking in terms of um, input tokens doesn't, in order to get this structured data, it actually reduces. Um, but my completion tokens go up. Obviously, that price hasn't changed in terms of the API changes. So it's that's something to be mindful of as you are using these new models. Anyway, yeah, I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you found that useful. Um, I'm going to be checking out more things to do with the OpenAI API soon. And uh, if you like the video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. I will talk to you in a new video soon. All right, bye for now. Bye.